All righty. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our Salesforce Marketing Cloud training session uh, or series. This is going to be session one. Um, as I say on our LinkedIn post, uh, this was intended to be an um, internal session, you know, for, for some of our team members and other people that needed to get familiar with Unscript but we open it up to everyone so it's gonna be a little bit informal i'm gonna show some code um, you know we're gonna we're gonna have a little fun on this next hour so this session is intended for everyone who doesn't know much about amscript um maybe you have a marketing cloud account but um you don't need um you know you don't, you don't know much about amscript or how you to get started so we're gonna cover the basics and then there's going to be a session two that is going to be a little more advanced Unscript. Uh, and then we're going to have a server-side JavaScript session that Javier de Mauri is going to lead. And then another one about uh, Journey Builder, make, make building your Journey Builder integration. So it's going to go from uh, from really basic uh, to more advanced. Okay. So if you don't know much about Unscript, it's okay. You know, you're in a good in a good place. So a couple of housekeeping items. Um, Send any questions that you have through a webinar chat window. I'm gonna address those uh, at the end of the uh, of the webinar. I have Zoe uh, Solish also from our team that's gonna help me uh, reach uh, through some questions, you know, and, and go over. So Zoe, I I um, I'm gonna rely on you to send me some of the questions, you know, through uh, through chat if you don't mind. Um, you know, we were intended to open this to everyone, but we did, you know, because we want to be able to help and, and give resources to people. Um, but I don't want to commit to something that I can't deliver. So if, I, you know, we may get a lot of questions after, you know, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, keep you hanging. So there are a lot of really good resources that you can use to ask questions uh, about Unscript or about, um, you know, anything that, that you're trying to accomplish with Unscript. And I'm into those uh those as well so if you have um you know any questions you can visit the stack exchange uh you can visit the trailblazer community um and you can also access the developer documentation that has great great documentation okay um so all the material that we're going to look here is going to be uploaded into a GitHub repository. So we have a GitHub repository for this session, and we have a folder for each session. So in here, you're going to see for session one, you have the sample email that we're going to be using, and we have some data that uh, we're going to be using. And I'll walk you through that in a minute. Okay? So you're going to have access to all these materials so you can practice yourself. All right, the agenda for today, like I said, we're going to talk about AmScript. What is AmScript? We're going to talk about some basic in, uh, syntax. We're going to talk about declaring variables and setting variables. Uh, we're going to talk about functions. What are functions? What are some of the useful functions that I use every day? Uh, displaying and cleaning data. And I'm going to point you to some links that you can uh, you can use. OK? All right. So before we start, I want to introduce myself, just tell you a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Patricio Sapir. I go by Pato. I'm originally from Argentina. Um, I live in the US now in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm a solutions consultant uh, with, with Devs United. I have a lot of experience already working with Marketing Cloud from the exact target days. Um, you know, the team that I work with, we were one of the first ones to develop some of the first App exchange applications for exact target at the time. Um, we did the one called Coding Color that was like an AMP script editor within Marketing Cloud, kind of like forefront of content builder sort of. Um, so, you know, we, we got a lot of experience uh, working with AMP script and scripting technologies and, and kind of taking Marketing Cloud to to the next level. So, um, you know, I hope this, I can, I can provide some knowledge with this, uh, with this couple of sessions um, you know, in the next couple of weeks. 
So let's talk about AMP script. So what is AMP script? Basic definition, AMP script is a proprietary scripting language that you can uh, use to make uh, very highly personalized experiences within Marketing Cloud. So as you know, Marketing Cloud, um, you know, at, at the beginning, there wasn't a lot of options such as Einstein or Content Builder to extend the platform to create highly personalized messages. So you had to rely a lot on scripting languages. Um, and when AmpScript came along, um, it, it, it made, you know, it, it, it was a really powerful tool for marketers to create those personalized messages. So, you know, AmpScript, AmpScript is, a, is, a, is a very useful tool still today because there are still very extreme and, and complex scenarios that you want to accomplish with your team and AmpScript such as technologies such as AmpScript and service like JavaScript allow, allow you to do that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about pros and cons about, you know, in AmpScript. This is more kind of like my editorial, you know, my, my own perception and opinion of the AmpScript language. So some people may agree or disagree to, to these statements. But one of the things I found about AmpScript, I come from a web development environment uh, using PHP or even classic ASP. And, um, you know, for me, AmpScript was really easy to learn because of that. You know, the, the, the concepts when you're building uh, things like preference centers or cloud page solutions. Uh, if you know a lot about PHP or classic ASP, you get you get uh, you get it re uh, really easy, you know. Um, we did a lot of testing about performance with AmpScript. We actually had a client that that sends billions with a B of emails a year, and we you know performance was really important to them because their sense will take hours. Um, we did run several tests where, um, you know, comparing server-side JavaScript with AmpScript with GTL, which is kind of like a newer scripting or, or templating language. And uh, we did find that AmpScript performs a little bit faster. Uh, I'm not trying to say that AmpScript is better than this or the other one. Uh, it, it's just that if performance is a factor that you should consider, maybe unscript is, uh, is 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 a good uh, way to go but i always um i always recommend everyone to run proof of concepts to test um you know before before making those decisions if performance is something that that you wanna you wanna look at right and then the other one is it, it can be very powerful that like you can do a lot a lot of really powerful things within marketing cloud if you learn a lot about it uh, things like interacting with Salesforce CRM objects, uh, parsing XML files, you know, uh, or access using SSLT. You can do a lot of crazy things if uh, if you know a lot, get to know a lot about AmpScript. A couple of uh, not so such good things, you know, about AmpScript that I noticed is that similar to the last bullet point, you know, even though it's very powerful, if you're not very familiar with the language. Uh, then, you know, AmpScript can be a little bit challenging to learn and getting used to if your use case is, is very, very complex. Um, you know, if you're trying to pull data from an external API, parse an XML, or even if you're trying to parse a JSON file, a JSON object, it might not be as easy to do with AmpScript. The other one that I don't have here, uh, but it, it's kind of related to the second bullet point is that, you know, there are a lot of syntax highlighters out there created by the community and I'll show you one that I that I use and I like. Uh, but there's not really like um, user interface like Visual Studio or PHP Storm or something like that for AmpScript where you can validate the message and you can run through previews. Everything you have to do in Marketing Cloud. You have to find your own way of you know storing that into into source code, into like a GitHub repo and things like that. So uh, that's kind of like a little bit of a disadvantage, you know, like backing up files and things like that, and even like having like a user interface to validate, um, you know, that's not available outside of Marketing Cloud. Um, so you spend a little more time doing those things. And the other one is, I would say that I don't have here is readability. Sometimes if you don't do, you know, this this comes with all programming languages, but AmpScript may be a little bit harder to read um, because you are mixing it with HTML. 
Um, so if people don't do a good job at commenting or even like um, nesting HTML correctly and things like that, AMP script can be a little bit hard to to read, um, you know, in some in some some files, some in some cases. So let's talk about where where can I use AMP script. So like I say, AMP script is not only for emails. Okay, so it's not that you know if you saw AMP script is you, you know the limit is not only emails. You can use AMP script in social lines. You can create your own con you know you can you can have content blocks and reuse you know create reusable AMP script snippets you know with using Content Builder. You can use AMP script in SMS messages. Uh, you know to get the response of an SMS and do something with that with with uh, mobile connect very powerful for uh, cloud pages if you are building your own preference center or if you are building um, you know um, a microsite solution you know you can use some script for that you can use some script in sender profiles uh, if you have to make um, you know the uh, dynamic sender profile based on the owner of a record in CRM, for example, you can use some script to build dynamically the from email address and the from name using dynamics and the profiles, uh, you know, using AMP script. And you can also use AMP script for exclusion scripts. Exclusion script is a really good um, strategy that some people use to exclude people from an email send. So in an email send definition, you have a little text box that says exclusion script. If you type an AMP script if statement, if that statement is true, it's going to exclude the person to get that email. Um, so it's, it's, it's in extreme scenarios, it's a really good way to, um, to, to exclude a person. It's usually, sometimes I see it used in frequency capping. So if you want to avoid people getting more than X amount of emails on a day, um, you know, some people have implemented exclusion script to do, to do things like that. Uh, also, real-time validations, you know, for like things like, uh, you know, like like an email that is sensitive. If you want to do real-time validation right before at the time of send, because you have an automated email, that that could be a good use case. These are all the places I think you can use. Uh, some people on on the on the phone might know there are others. Um, happy to hear, you know, if 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 I miss anyone, any other places. So development approach. Um, There, um, you know, when when you start developing with AMP script, you have you know you have to think about okay, how what will be the strategy to develop, you know, and and this is more for people that are not used to coding uh, or that are just getting started. This is just my point of view on how what what the best practices, so what is the process that should be follow uh, to develop logic in AMP script. So the first one is gather and validate requirements. You know, so meet with your team, with meet with the marketing team, and understand. Okay, what is it? What that you want to do? Document those requirements and get sign off. It's almost if you think about it, it's, it's um, a good analogy with architecture. You know, you're not gonna build a house until you have a blueprint approved by your client. This is the same. You shouldn't really like go and build a solution without having some sort of sign off on the design. If you're bit, if you're adding personalization on an email, you know, first name, last name, maybe that's easy. But if you're doing a little more complex solution, it's always good to have a, a plan and, and have that plan approved by the marketing team. Um, the second step is develop logic using static data. So I, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna start interacting a little more and, and show you some examples here in a minute. Uh, but, you know, if you, it, it, when you are coding in AMP the best way to do it is, I found, is to do everything with variables that are hard coded first, run the logic, make sure it works, and then the next step is, you know, verify that proof of concept, show it to the stakeholder, make sure it works, that they like it, and then step four is, okay, now I'm gonna switch to do that relational lookup, you know, into an external uh, data extension that I don't have. A lot of times I see people getting hung up into issues where, um, you know, because they try to do the full blown solution right away, you know, and it turns out that, oh, you know what, you have an issue because you don't have this column in that extension or, 
you know, I don't, I don't know, you're, you're not closing nesting your if statements correctly. But if you would have started with a simple scenario and add more details later, I guarantee you that you wouldn't be running into those issues because you are paying more attention along the way. So I always try to start with a simple scenario, try to hard code my variables, make sure it works, and then add more detail as I, as I go through. And the last couple of um, steps are test, test, and test a lot. So test, test, and test. Because, you know, especially for email, uh, you know, we're lucky some of us who are web developers, we're lucky that sometimes we push code if that code is, it doesn't work well, it could be critical for the business, but luckily you can deploy that file again, you can deploy that library again, and it works, right? With email, if it goes out, it goes out. There is no way back to that. If an SMS goes out and the personalization is wrong, that's it. So it's really important that you map, up all, map out all your scenarios and that you test um, a lot. So let's go over our use case. So we use this, um, this fantasy online store called Football Shop. Um, we joke that it's our side business, you know, and, and Debs United, uh, but it's, it's really a, a, an, an online shop that we have, a fake, obviously, online shop that we have. So we can try things like, uh, I don't know, Einstein uh, product recommendations, right? So we have a setup with Einstein product recommendations. We use it to do journeys, you know, and, and show customers how a journey could look like, you know. So we use it a lot as a generic use case, right? In this case, our client from Football Shop has this use case that we're going to look to build into the next uh, two sessions, okay? So the first, um, the first uh, requirement is that they want to display in the subject line the current month, the current month name. They want to display subscriber's first name over here, and they want to display top abandoned product by unit price. So this is an abandoned car product uh, email. Uh, it shows a feature product, and it says, hey, complete your order before the end of the month, uh, so you can save 10% if you finish you know, this product. So we want to show the product description, you want to show the product image, and then they have the Football Shop has sales events that they run, so you know all these events are uh, have dates in them, but they are going to be run. So we are going to um, to want to display the top four events from sooner to later. Okay, so the event has a name and a promo code that you can go in the site at that time and that date and and use a promo code. You know, and you get a discount or something. Okay. Um, so as I said, you know, at the beginning, don't worry. You know, if Everything is going to be here in the in the in the GitHub repo. We're also going to have the recording of the session. We'll load them later on in a couple of weeks. We will they'll be available as well. But what's important is that you have everything here to start, right? So uh, in Content Builder, well, so what I put in the file here is let's look at Content Builder real quick. So we have four direct extensions. We have the direct extension with the abandoned basket header. We put some data, some random data. This is completely random email addresses that don't exist. Um, so we have some data about what is the basket ID, the first name, and the subscriber key. Then the details, we have the details for that basket, which has all the products. Uh, to make it easier, I have a unit price here, just to make it easier for this use case. Maybe, typically, you wouldn't have the unit price. You know, it will reference the, that in the product, in the price of the product. But to make it a little bit easier, I did that. And we have a product catalog, okay? So we have our 44 products um, that they have the name, the description, the category, the image URL, and the price, okay? And then the last that extension that we have is the events, that extension, uh, which, you know, has six events uh, with the promo code, the event date, and the, um, the name of the event, okay? And then we have our email here. We have our email that we're gonna start coding following the examples uh, below, okay? So I'm gonna make a copy of this email, so I can have like a, a, you know, I usually make a copy, I have a static version, and then I make a copy uh, here, 
So we have a copy of email. So this is an HTML based email that we're going to start coding. All right. If you want to deploy this solution, this scenario in your marketing cloud account, I put the deployment manager JSON uh, manifest here. This is deployment manager. If you haven't used it, it's awesome. It's a free uh, app exchange app for marketing cloud that allows you to uh, import and export snapshots of journeys, that extensions, automations, attribute groups, and all you do is you can import the, you know, you can install it, you can import this JSON file, and it deploys the structure of, the, of that extension. And then I put here the CSV files with the data, you know, that has random data that you can use. Okay, so this has, um, this is gonna set you up. And then I put the HTML of the email that I was showing you. So if you want to practice or follow along, you can uh, you can do it. Okay. All right. So let's look at uh, the first thing that we want to look at: the basic syntax. Okay. So AMP script has to be surrounded with the following: percent percent equal sign. If your code is only one line of code, but if you are basically if if your code is a function that you are calling to print a value, you know if it's one line of code that you're gonna do. You put this percent percent equal sign and then you close it equal sign percent percent and then you put your code inside. This doesn't work with if statements or for statements. It only works if you're calling a function and that function is one line of code. Uh, and that function, you know, if it's returning anything, that's the only time you, you want to use this. And I'll show you an example in a minute. If you are writing more code, you put a square bracket. So percent percent square bracket, you put all the code square bracket percent percent and if you're writing uh, just an attribute or you know the name of a column you just do percent percent and the name of a column okay so i'm going to show you here in visual studio i have visual studio i use a plugin that's if you go in, in visual so visual studio code and extensions you look for AMP script i use this extension uh, that is very cool. Uh, it has a lot of how to complete all the functions. You can use that. So here with Unscript, so basically what I was saying is what you know what you can do is you can say, okay, if I'm writing one line of code, I always have to surround you know my Unscript with percent percent equal sign, and then if I'm calling a function, for example, give me today's date, that function is going to return today's date. We're going to talk about functions in a minute, okay? Now, if I had to say write a little more AMP script, so I have to say, okay, if first name equals Pato, then and if, oops, sorry, one click, um, then I have to uh, do uh, square brackets. Now, AMP script, the cool thing about AMP script is I can combine AMP script with HTML. So I could have something like, I don't know, this, hello. You know, and then I'm gonna say if if first name equals to Pato, then set first name equals to Patricia. And then underneath here, I can say, uh, I don't know, whatever, right? I can print the first name. Okay, so I can combine AMSCRIPT with HTML. I can also do things like this, for example. Close my unscript, and then I can open here, and then put HTML in here. Uh, you know, and then we we'll print the first name here. So you can actually within within unscript statements, you don't have to finish up. Like if you open an if statement, you don't have to close it you know, within the block, you can open, open, you know, square brackets, write some code, put some HTML in the middle and block. The only thing that Unscript cares about is that if that the structures are complete. So if you open a for loop that you close it afterwards, if you open a CFS statement that you close it afterwards. At the end of the day, you should look at this as not as HTML or Unscript, but as a whole file together. Okay. Uh, so again, 
percent percent equal sign or percent percent uh, square bracket. Let's talk about variables uh, in a minute. So basically, what we are going to do uh, is we're going to we said we were going to print the person first name right on the, on the use cases. So we're going to go to our email here. Um, we're going to look for first name, and here on the part that that uh, we have a first name. All we have to do is we're going to do okay percent percent first name. So now what, what we're going to do is we're going to preview this. So when I preview the email, and we see that it prints correctly. Okay. Um, now, like I said before, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable for the first name. Okay. So a variable is a container. Okay, it's a container of information. So a variable is declared and then set. Uh, set, we're going to call it salutation. Let's see, make this a little bigger so you can see. Salutation equals first name. So, uh, sorry, we're going to declare this variable and now we're going to set it. Okay, so um, Unscript is a loosely typed language, so you don't really need to use the uh, de declaration of variables, but it's a best practice. Uh, you know, to declare your variables before you use them. So I usually do that. Um, so then what we're saying with this variable is I want to put the value of the first name column of my data extension into a variable, into a container that's called first name, because I'm going to use it later. I can use it later for a lot of reasons, right? Um, so in my case, I'm going to go ahead here. You know, and let's, and let's put my name. I'm going to hard code it. Yeah. And I'm going to go where I have the first name here, and we're going to print the value of that variable. Okay. Salutation. All right. Uh, let's preview this, see if it works or if I forgot something. Okay. Pato shows okay. All right. So it shows my first name no matter what I do. So now I make sure that my code at least works. All right. Now, let's talk about a little bit, you know, so we have this, I usually put my main Unscript on the very top of the email, so it's easy to find. Uh, also, if you wanna use comments, um, uh, you know, you do it like this, you know, you can put your comments, so declaring variables. Um, but, you know, it's a lot more readable if you're putting your, your Unscript at the top and then it renders at the bottom, all right? Um, you can use Unscript to personalize, as we, as we show us printing the first name, is simply percent percent and the column name. Now, there is another function um, that is called attribute value. Um, it's usually, it, it's a better practice to use it. It's used when you don't know if you're going to have a column in your data extension and you don't want your email to fail, but you know you have an attribute at the subscriber level. Uh, that's a little more advanced. We're not going to get into that in this session. Um, but typically, if you want to print the value of a column, you will use percent percent and the name of the column, just like we did before. You will also use percent percent and, uh, and the name when you're using personalization strings. So personalization strings is a really useful way to print. Uh, it's almost like uh, default strings that Marketing Cloud has. So for example, one of our use cases is I want to print the um the the name of the month right the name of the current month so i have unscript you know um personalization strings for that i have personalization strings to print the day of the day personalization strings to uh print the name of the email right there is one useful that is called message contacts con this one gives me uh, the context of where the person is looking at the email. So say, for example, that you want to display a different image if, you're, if your subscriber is looking at the email as a, online, you know, that click view, on, view email online. So you can do something like this, right? You can go here and say, if uh, 
what was it called? Message context equals view as a web page. Then, and then we'll put the div here. Then we can put another HTML here, right? Another HTML for view online viewers. So you can change your entire content of the email, you know, if you want. So you can do this and you can do an else else statement and then show your, your actual email, right? Uh, so th this one message contact is pretty powerful. Um, another one that I use a lot is uh, job ID, you know, the, the ones that you want to you want to get the job ID for tracking purposes. Um, so anyway, there is a lot, a lot of uh, things. Email address, you know, you can print that. A everything that travels, you know, in, in Marketing Cloud travels encrypted, but when you use this on an email, it gets the, the code and decrypted, right? Um, there are some about SMS. There is a lot of those, so I really recommend you to to look at this uh, at this list is very powerful. Uh, okay, all right. So uh, we we're gonna print the month the month name. So in the subject line. So as I, as I say, you can use Anscript in uh, subject lines as well. So I'm gonna put here. Okay. Uh, let's go. Okay. So I'm gonna simply switch this. For a month, for percent percent, subject line. Okay. Uh, let's see if this fails. This might fail. That way we can see if there is an error. Yeah. So this is how you will see an error. I have a space on my month. So it will, you know, before, now the errors are a lot more descriptive, but at the time, a few, couple of years ago, sometimes it will say, oh, there was an error. And you didn't know what the error was. Uh, I think it's with underscore. Oh, no, it's not. Hold on. Oh, it's without anything. OK. There we go. If it's too perfect, you guys may think that this is recorded, right? So, um, all right. So, complete your order before April ends, right? So, we have that. So, we have the month and we have. Uh, my name in it, okay? Anscript is not uh, case sensitive. So, you know, the variables are not case sensitive. The function names are not case sensitive, so you're fine. Uh, the program that I'm using here is Visual Studio Code with uh, the Anscript highlighter, you know, that you can get. Visual Studio Code is free. Uh, it's very cool. You know, it also has integration with GitHub and Bitbucket, so you can, you know, you can push your code. So we use that a lot here. All right. So uh, what do we have next? Uh, we talk about functions. Okay, let's talk about functions. So functions, let's go to this one. Uh, this one's another one. Uh, functions are reusable block of functionality, right? So think about it if you were you know, programming in JavaScript, for example, you are pulling today's date and you're parsing in a particular format. And you have to use that everywhere in your project a hundred times. You don't want to that repeat that code all the time. So what you do is you create a function, and the function is a reusable piece of code. Amscript comes with a ton of functions that are very useful, and a function returns a value, right? Um, most likely with with Amscript, um, you know, functions will return a value. Some functions in Amscript, the, the fewer ones I think they don't return a value, but most of them return a value. Uh, and functions can take parameters. For example, the add function, which adds two numbers together, uh, takes two parameters. And the parameters are um, separated by a comma. So if I'm calling the add function to add two numbers, then I'm going to pass two parameters. Two numbers, you know. Some functions are flexible that they can take up to n parameters, and some functions functions they just take two parameters and that's it. Okay. So you can see there's a ton of functions in this link that I put here, but like a lot. It's it's insane. Um, and and a lot, you know, the ones that I use the most are, you know, you have functions to interact with the uh, SOAP API, 
uh, you have functions to insert data into a data extension to you know to uh, to retrieve data which we're going to look in session two uh, you have functions to build data from an xml file you know uh, text file uh, you can call content blocks by referencing there is a lot a lot of functions um, and if you go into this documentation, you can see, for example, I don't know, bar barcode URL. You can print the image of a barcode in an email, which is great. Uh, but you see, it takes nine parameters and it tells you which ones are required, which ones are not. Um, so it's very easy, you know, to go back in the documentation. Usually what I do, I don't remember all the all the functions by heart. Some of them I do, uh, but I always, as you saw just earlier, I always go back and look at the docs. It's always good to to look at what's available, um, you know, and see if you can do, if you can accomplish your your goals there. So the one function that I want to do is I want to use proper case, right? Because um, you know, as you can see, in my email, I was printing my email, my uh, my um, my first name with different uppercase, lowercase. I'm gonna change this to first name to the first name column. I'm gonna see what happens. Okay, so this one is empty, it doesn't show the name. This one has lowercase. This one has Patrick, uppercase, lowercase. So as you can see the data, my engineering team didn't didn't set this right and the data is not coming completely. So that's another thing that you always have to make sure. You know, the that you're always doing putting fail safes and, and, and you know preparing for the worst case scenario where you may not have the first name and you don't want to send an email that has a comma in it right or that your first name might have different case, cases because the person typed the name wrong right so we're going to use these functions proper case lowercase uppercase and format right so the ones that I, the one that i use the most is proper case uh, this one returns a string with a letter, you know, capitalized on each word. But you also have lowercase, uppercase, and format. Format is really good also. You can format the date. We're going to use it on, on the next session to format the dates of the events, but you can format it. Another thing that I did mention, strings. So if it's not a number, if it's a text, they have to be surrounded by double quotes, you know. Um, so what I'm going to do here, we're going to do here simply. And now we're going to call the proper case function. And the parameter, based on the documentation, it takes one parameter, which is a, the string. In this case, the string is inside my column name. So all I have to do is put the column name. OK, so now we'll see. So Lana was fine, Hoyt, Patrick now shows correctly. Okay. Benjamin was all lowercase, now shows correctly. This one's still empty. So now we're going to get into um, if conditional statements. Okay. Because now what we want to do is what? Is if the name is empty, then I want to show something else. Let's say I want to show friend, the word friend, you know, which, you know, we need to use a lot more in these days. <laughs> so let's, let's use the word friend. Okay, um, so let's go back and let's talk about uh, if statements. If statements are, are very, very easy to use. So, it, it, you know, the way I read it is, you know, if something happens, then do something. Otherwise, or else, do something else. And end of sentence. That's it. That's a natural, natural way to read. Uh, and if statements, right? In AMP script, we have um, you know operators to compare. In this case, if we want to compare that a name is equals to Melissa, for example, we use the double equal sign. The way I remember that it's double equal is uh, using a phrase. So, for example, if name equals to, so two words, two equals equals to, if name equals to. Melissa, then hi Melissa, else I guess and if. 
So as you can see, well, actually I have an unscript error in my in my presentation. I just noticed I'm validating my own PowerPoint. Javier, you are supposed to catch this. Uh, you're my uns personal unscript validator. But that's okay. So if uh, if name equals to Melissa in double you know, in double quotes, because it's a string, Melissa is a string, and it's, and it's not a column, a name of a column, so it's a double string. Then, hi, Melissa. Here I'm putting HTML, it doesn't matter. I'm closing. Yes. Remember I told you that if you have one line of code, you use percent percent equal sign. That's not the case if you are using if statements. You have to use the square brackets, because your your code, you know, is going to be closed here in, in the if, right? So, in this case, you don't use equal sign, only when you are calling out a function. Okay. So if name equals to Melissa, then first name. Else, uh, print something else. You can also use operators like and or or. You know, if name equals to Melissa and age greater than, again, how do I remember, you know, the operator is greater than, greater or equal, right? Greater or equal, greater than. 21, then hi Melissa. We can also use else if. So imagine, for example, you know, Unscript doesn't have like a switch, uh, but you know, like uh, we imagine, for example, um, if we want to use else if, else if, you know, we want to use if it does, if 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 the age is not, uh, if the name is not Melissa, but the age is under 21, they show they show something else, right? So one way to do is to nesting if statements, right? Another quick way to do it is to call else if. Okay, so I could say if Melissa, if name equals to Melissa and age greater than or equal to 21, then hi Melissa. Else, if a name is equals to Melissa, but the age is not is less than 21, then you have to be 21 to see this message. Right. Else, hi guest. I don't know who you are. I don't even know if you're 21 or not. Um, another way to do it will be like if, close say if, then ask a second question. You can nest if inside each other. So you can do things like, you know, if, um, maybe this one, if uh, name equals Melissa, then if age than 21 then and you can you can nest if statements okay you could you could do it this way or you can do it this way which in this case you are always only opening an if statement so you need to close one okay yeah, that's simple so every time you have that's your their their um thing i i use every time i have an if i count how many end if i have if i open an if i have to close an end if so if I if I open an or if I nest with two spaces usually or a tab, some people use tabs. So I say if I open an if, I close one if. I'm missing one one and if. Okay, I'm gonna close it. So that's a good way to validate your own code before previewing. Just count your if and make sure that you have the same amount of end ifs. Um Talking about nesting, you can also nest uh, functions. Okay, so I could nest, for example, add five plus four, and I could nest it with another one, with another add. So add the result of this function. This is gonna run first, it's gonna return nine. I have to think about that for a second, that's embarrassing. And then the result of this function, I'm gonna add it to my add function, I'm gonna add 10. So I can nest functions too, which can be useful, but sometimes ensure. So going back to the if statement um, real quick, before we go into the questions. So we wanna make sure that if this is empty, we show the, the word uh, friend, right? So we're gonna say, in this case, the function is not gonna error, okay? So don't worry, it's not gonna throw an error because the, the, this is empty, it's gonna just return empty. If we wanna save some processing time, we can we can do this differently, right? So we can say the following. Uh, I'm gonna say this. 
we can do something like this, right? If salutation equals then set salutation equals to friend else this is one way to do it. I'm gonna show you two ways to do it, okay? Set or three. Salutation equals to proper case first name. This one way to do it, not my favorite. This is how we do it, but this is how to show you like an if and else statement. Another way to do it is this. Proper case, if salutation, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna use a function because there is a function if empty salutation then set salutation equal to friend okay so I'm calling a function that checks if, if a value is empty or no if it is it's gonna return true and then set the salutation as friend okay um you can also use the not operator so say for example i wanted to check that the name is not empty i can say if not empty so if this is if this is false then go into the statement okay um all right okay so uh let's do a preview of this and now this one says friend because uh, and this is the other thing that they added um, a few a couple years a year or two ago is awesome. Before you didn't know you had to have like the two tabs open to see your data. You know now with Content Builder you can see the values of your columns in that extension. So I can tell right away. Oh, first name is empty, but it's showing friend. So my code is working, right? Benjamin is showing proper case. Patrick is showing proper case. Okay. So with that, we made like half of our use case already. You know, what we have left is, is to show the products um, description and even names, which we're gonna look in the second session. Um, but, you know, I wanted to give you a quick intro of, of, of the language and script, how variables work and whatnot. This is supporting documentation that I highly recommend looking at uh, I, I forgot to include trailhead here i highly recommend uh, looking at trailhead as well for um for the um you know for for some guys as well general script resource um here this developer doc has a lot of intro to unscript intro to server side javascript there is a section called getting starting with unscript that it has Amstrad 101, 201, so it has like courses that you can follow, which is really, really useful. Um, it also talks about Amstrad syntax, the operators that we call, and, and all that. So very, very recommended. Um, like I said, they're getting started from Amstrad, and the Stack Exchange is a really good resource if you have questions. You know, there is a lot of uh, unscript tag questions that you can, you know, you can see, you can ask questions. I'm there are sometimes not, not as much as I would like to, but there is a lot of people that know a lot about the language and they can help you if you have any questions or issues. So I use this a lot. Uh, so let's go with the questions. Let's see, uh, is the language case sensitive uh, or is case insensitive? First name equals Melissa as uh, is the same as first name equals Melissa. So uh, the, when it comes to strings, comparing strings, it's gonna be uh, case sensitive. But let's test it out actually if you want. Yep, let's do that. So um, you know, here for example, first name, that's the exact name of my column, but I'm gonna say first name like that. And I'm gonna say if you know, if uh, salutation equals Patrick. So that was one of the names that we had, but I'm putting all in lowercase, it was in different. So if salutation equals Patrick, uh, I'm gonna show friend, 
Okay. So let's test it out real quick. Let's look for Patrick. I think he was around here. Here's Patrick. Now he sends friend. Okay. Um, so it, you know, in this is it's, it's not case sensitive. I can put, you know, it compares the value of uh, of my column. Okay, of, of my value. The same happens with functions, with column names. You know, it's not case sensitive. Um, the support on email clients uh, like Windows. So, uh, AmScript is a scripting language, and it's it's, it's going to be beyond the email client. You know that that relies on the HTML and how you're coding your HTML. Uh, you know you don't that that doesn't even have to do with uh, marketing cloud itself. It's a email client. You know it's HTML that you're coding. So there are a lot of uh, guidelines on how to code emails properly to all the email clients. Uh, Marketing Cloud also comes with Linmus, that integration that you can integrate to test. In this preview that I was doing, you can put your Linmus account and it's going to show you previews on, on all your email clients. Um, so that's, that's outside of Unscript, really. Um, I think I answered some of our questions. I don't know, so if you have any others, I know we have a few minutes left. Okay. So let's talk about. Sorry, Pato, there's a couple more coming in. Okay. Um, what do you use to concat strings? That's a good one. Uh, there is a function called concat. Uh, let's look it up. String concat, this one. So it's a function called concat. Uh, this one is the one that you know you can concatenate as many strings as you want, and you can concatenate strings or variables together. So you can do things like concat hello, and then here you can say first name. That's a variable, and you can say today is. And uh, no, no, format date. Well, I'm going to say today is now. And then you print the value of, of the function now. So you can do crazy things like that with Concat and show hi, part of today is, and the date today is. <clears throat> do you have any anything else? Um, one more came through, or a couple more came through. Can you share some tips on debugging AmScript? Yeah, that's a really good one. Um, so Usually what I do when, when you have a ton of unscript written and you can't find what the error is, I go back to how I used to do it in ASP Classic, which was you print variables, right? So say that you have a very complex a lot of unscript and you're calculating, for example, uh, you're getting data from a data extension, you know, and you need to print, you know, you need to see if, if that data has more than one row, then do something and the email is not even showing anything, I, I start printing values. So I use a, the, this function b, you know, which is to print the value of a variable, and I print my value, right? So row count, and I print the value. So I start printing, or if I had to print the order number, so even before going into the deeper into email, I start printing everything that controls the logic. Because a lot of times what happens is that um, you don't, um, you're not looking at, at the context and you're trying to solve the issue. So I print all the variables all the time and I do a lot of previews. The other one that I use a lot and you know that happens to me a lot is, um, and I, I don't know if it content builder it happens a lot. I, I haven't really experienced it much, but you know, you have a text version of the email and, a, and a, an HTML version of, version of the email um, like this. Uh, sometimes it will happen that if you change the text version of the email, uh, the HTML version doesn't get affected, right? So if you start changing the text version of the email, then maybe one day you change HTML, but you have an error in your text version and you're getting an error constantly and you don't know why your code is perfect in the HTML and you forgot that you changed the text version. So then you have to go into a text version and change it there. 
that's an, another classic that used to happen to me a lot. Um, I don't know if it happens a lot with Contemira. I don't. I know that now people doesn't use a lot of the text version, but that's uh, that's something that happens. All right. So we have four minutes left. I want to leave you with um, you know a couple of things. If you have any questions about what what will happen in the one scenario or the other, you can set this this up in your account and test. You know, like we were talking about, does the AM script is case sensitive or not? It's very easy to tell. You know, you just test it. Or you know, what happens if if I have this scenario? Um, you know, you have these uh, files and example HTML files that you can upload to your account, and then. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to leave you is this exercise. Okay, so this is a bonus point. If if you want to write me on LinkedIn or somewhere and tell me, hey, I did it, that'd be awesome. Um, but this is another use case. You know, we finish our email, we show it. Our marketing team is super excited about it, and uh, and they say, oh wait, you know what? We want to test three different subject lines, and we want it to be completely random. We don't want to assign it to any group. You know, we want to test three different subject lines in email. You know, the A/B testing tool. It, it, you know, it's not enough for us. We want to be able to be completely random and test three of them. You know, so it's not A/B. It's A, B, and C. So what you have to do with all the files, you know, that I left you in the GitHub repo is pull a random number from one to thirty. Okay. And you can make up your subject lines. You can call it subject line one, subject line two, subject line three, whatever. If the number is uh, less or equals to 10, then show the first one. If it's between 10 and 20, shows the second one. And if it's between 20 and 30, show the third one. So you pull a random number every time and you show a different subject line. I'm going to give you a tip, which is. The subject line doesn't have to be like a text here. It can be a variable. So you can do this. I'm going to call the function that prints the value of a variable. That's the only way to, to print the value of a variable, by the way. Uh, I'm going to call it subject line. Okay. And here in the content, I'm going to declare a variable. Call it that. So you can do this in Unscript. You can write the content because the subject line renders processes after the content in order. Uh, so you can do this. So then if I preview, that's going to show. So now you can add all your logic in here. And I'm gonna, I know I, that's, that's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you anything else. So see if uh, you guys can, um, can do it. Um, all right, so I think we're running out of time. I know there were a couple of questions extra. I recommend going through, uh, through Stack Exchange. I mean, if you are a contact of ours, uh, just shoot me an email. We're not going to bug anyone with anything, um, you know, who registers, so don't worry about it. But if, if, you know, if you know who we are, just reach out to, to me if, we, if we're already in contact. Um, and then for my internal team at devs, um, and plus 54, thank you guys. I'll I'll ping you later uh, to see if you have any questions. And thanks everyone else for joining. Have a nice weekend. Stay safe and healthy.